Hello and welcome to Swing tutorial number 5 from caveonprogramming.com. So this is the fifth tutorial on Swing GUI programming in Java and in the last tutorial we created this Swing application here which has got a little panel here with a couple of text fields and an add button and on the right here there's a text area and if we look at the um, mainframe class here. Here you can see the, the panel with that has the text fields and the button and here's the text area. Now what I want to do in this tutorial is I want to make it so that when I click the button here after filling stuff in here and here that it adds some text to the text panel here. So in this tutorial we're going to look at um, event handling and custom events in Swing because to implement this, what I could do is I could make my details panel call text area methods directly to add stuff to it. But that's a very bad idea because your Swing program will end up um, an unmaintainable rat's nest if you do that. Um, so what you should do instead is create custom events and that's what we're going to look at in this tutorial. So I'm going to go, uh, go at a um, a brisk pace here because I need to fit this into 15 minutes and um, I'm going to assume that you're um, very familiar with interfaces and anonymous classes and that sort of thing already. So um, I'm going to start with my details panel here and I've got in here this button and I need to add an action listener to the button so that I can take action when it's clicked. So I'll say add, add button dot add action listener and new action listener I'll implement an anonymous class and I've got the action perform method here and uh, when the buttons clicked I will just get um, the name from the name field name field dot get text and of course I'm not actually allowed to refer to name field in here um, because it's um, and a method of an, of, of an anonymous class and this is a local variable. So I could either make this an instance variable or I could just make it final which is what I'll do and I'll make this one final too and now I can refer to it here and then I'll say string occupation equals occupation field dot get text and then I'll just form some text from that equals name plus let's have a colon plus occupation um, and uh, maybe a new line and for the moment I'll just do a sysout down here and output that information so if I run this application now uh, and I've got to put that semicolon in there as well then I could I could say John occupation software trainer and click add then this information will come out down here but I want it to come out in that in that um, text panel on the left and um, what I want is in my main frame here in the same way that I've added an action listener to the add button here I want to be able to add a sort of listener to the details panel that can respond to events that happen in the details panel and uh, so let's imagine that that, that that is possible I would, I would type something like details panel dot and here I've got add action listener so here I'd have something like let's say add detail listener and um, I would add uh, a class that implements the detail listener interface let's say so um, new detail listener here if I'm using an anonymous class and this detail listener interface would specify some method like action performed so let's call it um, public void detail event occurred maybe and that will accept a detail event detail event which will contain all the information about that event that's what I want and uh, I haven't got any of that at the moment but the first thing to do is implement this detail event so I'll go to new class and I'll call this detail event I'll make it extend event object which is in Java the Java util package Java util event object 
And um, this um, detail event has a constructor, so I'll say public event, which just accepts an object that's the source of the event. And the source of the event in this case would be my details panel. So I'll implement that constructor. The next thing I need is I need this detail listener interface. So let's create that. I'll go new um, interface. I'll call this detail listener listener like that and this is going to extend so extends event listener which is also in um, Java util um, and then go back to my main frame again and uh, I need to implement this method here so now I've got my detail listener I've got my detail event um, but oh I also need to add this to the interface that I've just created. Um, that's very important, of course. So my detail listener interface just specifies one method, which is this detail event occurred, occurred, which um, receives this detail event object. And now I can create a add detail listener um, object in my um, uh, in my det in my details panel. So I'll go down here and I just copied that text. So I'll say public void add details listener and that's going to require a detail listener um, object. And uh, I need to implement this method, of course. And I also want a, it's good practice if you create an add um, listener type event to also have a remove. Um, sorry, method, uh, a sort of remove method as well. And now I need to implement the guts of how this will work. So I'm going to give details panel here and um, actually I'll just humor eclipse here and uh, add this serial um, ID that it likes to have um, in case you want to serialize your classes. Best just to humor it. So uh, in my details panel I'm going to have a private event list, listener list and I'll call that listener list equals new event listener list and uh, this is a um, Java swing event um, class uh, for um, creating lists of events as you might imagine so um, I've got my listener list and um, here I just need to say listener list listener list dot add and the first argument is the class of the thing you want to add which will be basically your interface detail listener dot class and then the second thing is the listener like this so it's pretty simple I'll copy that because I also want to use that in here except that this is not going to be add but remove, remove. And um, now I need, uh, so I can add listeners to this class and I can remove them and that those methods will add or remove to this um, list here. But I need some way of um, firing events. I'm going to add a method here called public void fire detail event, which accepts a detail event um, event object and I'm going to firstly get my get an array from an array of objects which I'll call listeners from my listener list so listener list and this is sort of the most slightly cumbersome and complex aspect of this listener list dot get listener list and I need to step through this array of listeners two at a time so I'm going to go i equals not i less than listeners dot length and I'm going to say i plus equals plus equals two and the reason I want to step through two at a time is because um, the, um, the kind of first of every pair of items here is actually the class of, um, it's actually this class here so this is going to be 
I need to check if um, the class here that I'm dealing with equals the detail listener listener dot class and if it does then um, what detail listener not details listener and if this this class if this class here does match um, this one here then I know that I'm dealing with um, detail listeners a detail detail listener so I can cast the next argument to a detail listener like this so listeners i plus one i plus one so I need to cast that to a detail listener which is exactly what it is and then I can call detail event occurred and I can pass it this event here uh, so that's quite nasty. You can find this code, of course, on caveofprogramming.com as usual, and um, it's worth just you know. I mean, you can you can kind of copy it and just modify it to your own requirements, and once you've done it a few times, you'll soon get the hang. And now the important bit here is I need to fire those events. So here, um, well, I need some way of passing this this text information in my detail event. So um, I could I could do what I like really, but let's say that the detail event must be constructed with a string, string text, and let's give this detail event um, a private string text, and when it's constructed, let's say this dot text equals text, and finally I'll have a method for retrieving that um, text which I'll call get text and I'll return text private string get text okay so now when I construct my event I can say um, I can say well I can say fire fire oh, I didn't mean to get rid of that actually so I need this text I meant to get rid of this here I want to say fire detail event and uh, and I need to construct a new detail event here, detail event. And the first argument is going to be the source, which is this panel. The second argument is going to be the text. And a hey, presto. And so now um, I've this this code will all work here. And when I get the detail event, I can say string text equals event dot get text. And uh, I can say because I've made my text area final here so that I can refer to it here in, in an anonymous class. So I can say text area dot um, append and I'll append some text which will be the text that I got from my event here, my detail event. And now if I run this, I can say, um, okay, my name's John. I um, teach people software development, software trainer. And if I click add, it's going to appear here in my text area. So that's event handling in Swing Apps. And that's um, basically how you should always connect up your components. You should always have a controller, which is, uh, in this case, my main frame that listens to events on objects and tells other objects what to do. So all the events are routed through some kind of central place rather than the objects calling each other in a massive tangled rat's nest. So that's all for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you could follow it. And um, by all means, take a look at caveofprogramming.com and uh, inspect this code at your leisure. And join me again next time. And until then, happy coding. Mm -hmm.